Dear friends, colleague, uh, comrade, brothers and sisters, I greet you with all the greetings you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Sabah al khair, msa al khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wherever you are, whenever you are, wishing you uh, prosperous life, especially uh, having to suffer all of us from COVID and uh, the siege of COVID to many societies. While we're talking about COVID, we strangely found that a country like India become amber in color. India, which has produced and sent us the Delta variant of, uh, of uh, coronavirus, and we have seen thousands of people dying there recently, became amber. While a country like Turkey, which is nearly vaccinated 70% of its population, population about over 80 million, India is over 1 billion uh, citizens. Turkey is still red, but India became amber. And this is very strange. Even in health, we're still criticizing our action and our decision. But this is not our discussion point today. Our discussion point today will be about actually the generation which is fading and dying and disappearing, the generation of the 50. Uh, hurry up, all of you, to catch up with this generation. But further, five to five, the 17th episode. And you can see this drawing which I made. I will explain it to you later on. And we need to thank my colleague uh, Aya, who prepared the slideshow. Uh, my intention today is to take you back, to be with those people who were born in the 50s. Why? Why? Before they die, because most of us, alhamdulillah, lift this life to life to come. Uh, why? Because this generation of the 50s have seen a lot of things happening, a lot of changes in the Islamic world and in the Arab world. This number one. It was a link between Gen the, the generations who lived under the Islamic Khilafah or Islamic State that was abolished in 20, 1928, and you. So we are the people who taught, were taught by those people who lived during this Islamic State or Khilafah at that time. We were building and creating the scientific, uh, intellectual, and the cultural advancement on believing in societal constants, whether we, the generation of 50, or the generations who taught us before that, or were born in the 20s or 30s or 40s. And loyalty to become patriotic to our homeland to our family, to our region, to our ummah. Because we have societal constant. They have it and they passed it to us. What were these societal constants? They are uh, religion, constant, principle, faith, values, culture, history, manners, morality, and others. That's why we took this from that generation who lived under the shade of the Islamic Khilafah. They were having clear mind, which was not distracted, the modern audiovisual, audiovisuals, technological audiovisual distraction. Having far away thoughts, far away imagination, arranging and blazing thoughts, highly cultured and well educated people, whether the generation of the 50 or the generation before that. So 
We took from them what they have. To pass it to you, unfortunately, you have not seen what they have seen. You have not seen what we have seen. And we have not seen what they have seen. That's why I'm taking you back in this journey. I'm going to divide my talk today into nine points, nine points. Point number one, talking about the political the conflicts, the revolutions, and the coups and everything happened. Might be boring for some of you because I'm going to mention dates of happenings. And at the very beginning, I make Egypt as a focal point because it's centrality, because of its centrality to the Arab and Muslim world, and even to the whole world. A revolution came in 1952. We woke up in the morning and we found that we have a revolution of a new government and of a new president without knowing. And everybody was clapping. Then the political system in Egypt went through many, many, many uh, formation. First of all, they created so whatever they call it, the Liberation Council, 1953, uh, the National Union in 1957, then the Arab Societal, other uh, Arab Socialist Union, 1962. Then Egypt went because the economy was very strong and the military ruling groups involved itself in a very ugly war in Yemen from 62 to 67. Then Egypt was supporting, because of the economy, uh, many revolutions in the Arab world, liberation revolution in the Arab world, and, and even after Latin America. Then they started to adopt pan-Arabism or Arab nationalism, then becoming one of the leading countries of the non-alliance group or movement since 1955. This is the political system in a country which was a central point for the Arab and the Islamic world after the Islamic Khalifa uh, fall down in 28. 1952 to 1969. Then Sudan became an independent from Egypt. Egypt border before 1956 was the north is the Mediterranean Sea. The south is the north of Uganda. The east up to Garboub, uh, the west up to Garboub in Libya. 56, Sudan became independent, 1st of January, 56. And the decision taken by His Excellency, the President, no consultation to the people. This is how you get decision done when you have military ruling. In 1958, there was a union between Egypt and Syria from 22nd February to 58 to 28 September 61 was actually separation. Yes, in Sudan, there was a military coup in 1969 by uh, President Jafar Nomeri. Then there was a revolution or coup in Libya on the 1st of September, 1969. We have seen all this and what the media were talking about. And then we saw the Black September, which is a, a conflict, military conflict between the Palestinian and the Jordanian forces inside uh, Jordan uh, in 1971. Then there was an India-Pakistan war and the separation of East Pakistan, which became Bangladesh from 3rd to 16th of December, 1971. Then there was an Islamic revolution in Iran from uh, January 78 to February 79. Then during this revolution, there was the American hostage crisis for about 444 days, where the Iranian took 52 American hostages and it was taking them to be released about 444 days. Then the Soviet-Afghan war started 24 December 1979 to 15 February 1988. 
In 26 December 1991, the Soviet Union was dismantled. So the Soviet Union military forces went out of Afghanistan 15th February 1988. Then the Soviet Union fragmented or disintegrated in 26 December 1991 at the time of President Gorbachev. Then the first Gulf War between Iraq and Iran, which was about nearly for nine years, from 22nd September 1980 to 20 August 1988. Then personally, I have witnessed two or three incidents happen to me in 1982. First of all, Sabra and Shatira massacre in Lebanon, in Beirut, a Hama massacre in Syria, the Falkland War as well, and my visit to Bosnia as a governor at that time. Then uh, President Kafar Nameri applied Islamic Sharia in Sudan in 1983 uh, with the support of Dr. Hassan al Turabi and uh, at that time. Then there was a coup against Colonel uh, Numeri and his government in 1985, because there was an April uprise by Sudanese against the government of Numeri. Then 1985, Field Marshal Abdurrahman Swardab became the president for one year, and they promised one year. And he's the only Arab president who promised and fulfilled his promise as a military field marshal. And he took the presidency from 6 May 85, no, from uh, 6 April 85 to 6 May 86. Then there was an election in Sudan, and they chosen or elected. Uh, uh, Sadak al Mahdi, Prime Minister, in 1986, 6 May 86 to uh, 30 June 1989. Then there was something called Rescue Revolution, which is Al Bashir, another military coup in conjunction with Dr. Hassan al Turabi and his group uh, from uh, uh, June, uh, 30 June 1989. Then the Iraq invasion to Kuwait from 2nd to 4th August 1990. Then the second Gulf War, between whom? The first one was between Iran and Iraq. The second one was two stages, two between the international alliances, the Americans and the others, and the Iraqi forces. First stage was called Operation Desert Shield, 7th August 1990, and ended 17 January 1991. Second stage called Operation Desert Storm, 17 January 91 to 28 February 1991 as well. Then the Bosnia came war. Bosnia has a government of war against uh, Serbia came at the time. It was Bosnia has a government, Croatia and Serbia fighting one another. From April 6, 1992 to 14 December 1995, it was very bloody. I don't want to go in detail, but if you want, to listen more or to know more, you can call me. Then the Kosovo War from 28 February 98 to 11 June 1999. Then the Afghanistan, then the September 11th, 2001, who knows the September 11th happened in New York. Then the Afghan War, uh, 7 October 2001 till 15 August 2021. Then the Arab Spring came, started in Tunisia in 2010, then went like a, a, a wave or like a current or like a, to Egypt, Yemen, Libya, Syria uh, uh, in 2011. And still the conflict in Syria and Yemen is happening. Then the independence of South Sudan, 9 July 2011, then the, the collapse of the system or the regime in uh, Sudan, the, 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 sorry, the independence of South Sudan, the independence of South Sudan, 9 July 2011, then the collapse of Sudanese coup, uh, of, the, of the Sudanese uh, uh, government and the coup uh, 
military coup or call it a revolution, whatever you call it. Uh, people calling it many names in uh, 11 April 2019. Then I did not put the Arab Israeli conflict because central, affecting the culture, the morality, the values of all the young people like myself at the time. We started from 1940 or 48 war till, till normalization in 2021. It went through 1948 war, Suez Canal War 56, the Six Days War 67, and the War of Attrition uh, between Egypt and uh, Israel from uh, in uh, between 1st July 67 to about 7, 8, 1970. It is the Battle of Karama uh, in Jordan between the Jordanian forces and the PLO against the Israeli forces, and October War 1973 with Yom Kippur. Uh, the visit of President Sadat to uh, Jerusalem, 1911-77, the Litani River operation in the South Lebanese War, 14-3-1978, Camp David Accord, 17-9-1978, the South Lebanese War again, <coughs> Operation Peace for Galilee, or Operation Pine, 6-13 June, Palestinian Intifada started from uh, December 8, 1987 to 13 September 1993. Then Aqsa Intifada, uh, our uprising from 28 September 19, 2000, 2000. Then the Oslo Accord, uh, uh, 13 uh, September 1993, where uh, pre uh, President uh, Yasser Arafat signed the accord with uh, Israeli and in the, with, in the presence of President uh, uh, the president of the United States of America. I can't remember the name يعني, uh, now, uh, before uh, George Bush. Uh, oh, I forgot his name. He's a very smart, tall uh, man. Uh, then the Gaza siege uh, since to, uh, June 2007. Uh, then Gaza attack 27-12. Uh, 2008 to 18 for, uh, January 2009, then Gaza war between 8-7-2014, uh, and actually uh, for 50 days, and it's called two names, uh, uh, Operation Protective Edge or the Edible Storm, and the last, as I mentioned, six countries, six Arab countries normalized the relationship with Israel, Egypt, Jordan, uh, Morocco, uh, Sudan, um, Emirates, and Bahrain. This is the first point. This is how can you can see the political situation that young people like myself were living at that time. At the time, actually, uh, we learned a lot from the media, but whether this information were wrong or right is beside the point. Point number two, the education system, the culture, the values, the manners, the arts, and much easier travel. We, as the generation of the 50s, have taken of all of this knowledge from parents, like my father was born in 1906, and he lived at least 18 years under the shade of the Islamic Khalaf. That's my parents. My grandparents, of course, before that. Relatives between, neighbors, teachers, scholars, scientists, artists, wise people, novelists, authors, poets, thinkers, politicians, pioneers, and innovative individuals. Most of those people, not all of them, lived in the shade of the culture, of the culture and the strength of the sprawling Islamic state, called Khilafah at the time. And we were enjoying its multiple culture, languages, and histories. Having pluralism of ethnicity, pluralism of the Islamic State. Uh, so, uh, 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 racial diversity, facilitating the movement of citizens between different avenues of their societies, representing, at the time, globalization or Islamic world order. If we talk about uh, 
the world or the new world order now there was something called the islamic world order at that time world order which was definitely empowering uh, empowering their nations we took from them from the teachers and others the remaining of the global islamic culture in this area that we have not lived within it is weak state even as a weak state he to say the strongest days we find in our educational syllabi or syllabus there was religious education there's quran there was hadith there was history not history of your own country history of egypt history of the arab world history of the islamic world history of europe history of revolution we all these subjects were actually were a part of our educational syllabus okay different subjects that we learn like cooking like farming in our school used to have a playground football playground basketball uh, music room and others cost of life was very cheap my father of 1937 when he got his uh, equivalent to phd nowadays from al azhar his salary was 5 pounds a month when he married my mother he is rent of the flat which about i think uh, four bed flat in cairo was about 90 pence a month the kilo of meat was about one it was not called the kilo called uqqa uqqa is one one kilo and 200 grams was about one pence or two pence sometimes. And when he used to come from the mosque in the evening, because there was no fridges at the time, the butcher used to call him, Sheikh Abdu, please come, I have this piece of meat. You can take it. And because he does not want it to go west for a few pennies. That's why all the food was organic and cheap and fresh. My salary when I was qualified in 1976 was 17 pounds as a medical doctor with seven pounds actually, actually like allowance for actually having my clinic. If I have a clinic, they cut it off from me. If I don't have a clinic, so my salary was about 24 pounds. It's how cheap. When I was a young man at the school, I used to take one pence a day, maximum two pence, uh, eat bonus from my relatives, uh, or call it idea. Five pence, banknotes, 10 pence, 20 pence, 25 pence, make us very, very, very uh, happy at that time. Everything was cheap. We used to walk or to have a bicycle or to take the bus. Very few people used to have uh, uh, cars or even to uh, hire a taxi because it was expensive at that time. 10 pence or 20 pence to take the taxi from A to B to Z. Our entertainment at that time is to play football in the street, uh, is to visit relatives, to visit the graveyard, or to visit uh, the farm which created Hud Khanatar in uh, outside uh, outskirts of Egypt, created, uh, uh, built by Muhammad Ali the Great, or go to the city of Salah al Din or go to the museums, or go to Helwan, the Japanese uh, park or garden and others, or travel to Alexandria during summer and stay, spend the whole month. You know how much you used to rent the flat in Alexandria uh, uh, every month? The flat is about eight pounds a month. And it's sufficient to have two or three families together. Transportation, as I mentioned that, we're still using carts. This is the images that I draw to reflect my belief and my uh, sentimental feeling to this period. This is my teacher, all the teachers or the headmaster, headmasters and deputy headmasters were wearing suits, ties in a very handsome way, very respectable way, holding stick in their hands. When I used to do something wrong in the school, I've been beaten either by 
uh, what do you call it, uh, the stick, which called ruler, or uh, uh, something else like a wire on my feet when I do you just take my shoes off or my back. And the family were very supportive, not complaining. And this uh, rounded brown uh, thing is in the top left with uh, black uh, lines. This is a football. Call it Kora Sharab, socks ball, which to make it out of a sponge and socks. Tie it and make it rounded and play with it. The ones small rounded play, uh, objects there are the marbles. Just to play marbles in the middle of the road. This square is called like Siga. Put some stones and keep moving the stone from A to B to C to D. And this actually, how you used to rewrite uh, with, the, with the ink uh, jar. And at the bottom, as you can see, it is a gas lamp. Next to it is the radio, the old radio, and the table where every member of the family sit down together on the floor and eat together. And this is the sports shoes, which used to buy it from the uh, sports shop. You know, for how much? 30 pence. And we think it was too much. And a shop called Bata. Bata was an international shop. I think still having some shops in different parts of, the, of Europe. This is the education and social life. Technology, era. We moved from the thoughts, the memory, and the narration era into further writing, as I mentioned, inkwell and inkstand pencils, indelible pencils, which is actually to put it, there were pencils, pens, and ballpoint, into writing on the typewriters, then computer, then electronic devices. Communication was by mail, carried by mules or donkeys, then through carriage, carried by trains and cars, then through telegraph, telexes, faxes, electronic mailing and virtual communication. And from telephones in the central post office into telephone, home telephone, satellite telephone, mobile telephone, and social media. From listening to storytellers into radio program, into mobile radio, transistor, and television, then other means of social media. And from walking on foot between avenues, different streets or quarter, quarter alleyways, villages, towns, cities, into walking between galaxies, epicycles, or astronomical spaces, stars, moons, and suns. And from riding donkeys and mule into riding the space shuttles, or taking the space shuttles or the spaceships. Economy moved from what we call the barter trade, then weighing scales, then coins made out of gold, silver, copper, bronze, banknotes, then checks, bank transfers, bank draft, hawala, credit cards, then the e-currency and the digital currency, and the process is getting more sophisticated. And from door to door, salesmen and women used to come to our houses, into community markets, kiosks, family shops, front shop, shops and supermarkets, mega stores, trading companies, chain stores, multinational companies, transnational companies, and global economical blocks, and the sophistication goes on and on and on and on. The political system went, and the military system infrastructure went from the autocracy, the ruling of the one man, to the tribal, the family, monarchy, into establishing societies, okay? Developing societies, states. It went also to theocratic, the religious ruling, like the Pope in Rome and the other places, the, to parliamentary representation. There was no political party at that time. 
but uh, the parliament representative maybe could be used by the king or chosen by the king or by the pope. Or we call it in, 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 in Islam, Ahl al-Shura, Shura Council. Uh, parliamentary representation to the political party and to the military coup. Military coup became, 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 became part of the current life of our areas. Armed forces were voluntary citizens. People volunteer from the citizens, voluntary civilian volunteers to uh, developing a, a professional institution having multiple technical, technological, and scientific research based structured departmental organization and operation. The process of change was transformed from the heavy burdening quality, quantity, sorry, into the more advanced widely and fast spreading effective quality, which has no time or spaces or space limits to its development. It's going on and on all the time. This is number E. Number F, the world of imagination and vision. We were going to face, we are going to face a huge problem now. Why? As I mentioned earlier, the problem of clarity, because actually we have been distracted by the heavy bombardment of the incredible number of uh, message, audiovisual messages. The problem of clarity of mind, because if we have clear mind, this will lead to making the purity of the psyche, directing the philosophical reasoning, creating the societal cultures, bonding, protecting, and strengthening the constant social infrastructure, building the foundations of the modern civil state, where we found in the, the modern civil state that the citizen is at its summit and he or she is the most precious asset to the society, to the state and to the country. Not as we see it nowadays in certain countries. So clarity of mind leads to making purity of the psyche, directing the psychological, the, sorry, the philosophical reasoning, creating the societal culture, bonding, protecting and strengthening the constant social infrastructure, building the foundations of modern civil state, where we find that the citizen is at the summit of the state, actually there. Question asked to me by, or raised to me by one of my colleague, young colleague, he told me, why is there a problem? I said, because of the psyche, the intellect, the thought, and the insight are bombarded heavily on a day, not on a day basis, on our day, not on ours, on a, on a by minute by minute basis. Incredible numbers of audiovisual messages blurring the clarity of the intellectual philosophical psyche and disabling this this intellectual philosophical psyche, psyche from creating the different systems that can build the societies, the states, and the country. This, of course will impact negatively the social outcome, making or creating the different societal cultures. If I have a blurring mind, you will not get from me something like if I don't have, if I, like, like if I have clear mind. Number G is a natural and man made just many of them, many, many of them. I've seen it, wars, conflicts, immigration, migration, displacement, flooding, earthquake, volcanoes. I can't can write a book about it. But three things happened and affected my career. 1982, as I mentioned before. First of all, the massacre of Sabra and Shatila. Second is Hama massacre. All of them, 88, uh, 82. And thirdly, my visit to Bosnia as the government. This was a changing point in my life to leave my medical career and go to the social humanitarian developmental career. 
and now advocacy careers. The rise of non-state armed groups is everywhere. If we talk about the Red Army was in Japan, 1971 to 2001, Qaeda militant group, 1988 to 90, after the Soviet left Afghanistan, Shabab, and this was actually in uh, Afghanistan, Shabab group, militant group in Somalia, 2006, Boko Haram in North Nigeria, 2002, Anti-Balaka Alliance of Militias groups, Christian group in the Central African Republic, 2009. This is anti-Muslims, uh, ISIS or ISIL came from Al Qaeda in Iraq in 19, in, sorry, in 2004, and go on. And many, many of them now here and there. What is the difference between a military coup and a non state armed groups no much different in 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 uh, in drc more than 75 non-state armed groups last and not least two things happened the millennium we saw the millennium as well then we saw many many epidemics from polymyelitis at my my young age when i was affected by it and affected my leg Cholera, typhoid, smallpox, swine fever, birds flu, SARS, Ebola, COVID-19, and so on. But I'm not, in this point, I'm not, uh, what do you call it, uh, academically making a list. No, it is what I remember as incident happened to me. Now my message to you, young people, my message to you, young people, we are this generation who are fading. Our sun is setting. Okay. Most of us left this life, and the barbarian anti civilization, anti humanity, anti freedom are betting on the departure of all of us from this world. Please, please, the two duties now one on ourselves, who are still alive like me, to reach out for you. This is my duty. That's why I'm keeping calling you every other day, every week, sending you a message. The second is for you. Your absolute role is to find the people of this generation and hold on to them by your might before they go. Because this generation is a generation which will learn from the generation who lived under the Islamic State or the Khilafah. They are a few and you are plenty. They are weak and you are mighty. They are sick and you are healthy. They are miserable and you are live happily. They are poor and you are wealthy. They have no partners and you have solidity. They are leaving. Then show them your loyalty. This is my message to you to reach out for those people. Dear young people, let us realize that if you want to leave something back to the, 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 the a generation behind you, after you, that's what you need to leave. That's what I'm, I need to leave. What we need to leave? Science, experiences, and knowledge. Very important. Construction that we built, dwellings that we created, protection as a system, duality, clarity, and nobility of behavior, thought, and ideology. Legacy, culture, and morality. Biography, behavior, and serenity. That's what we need to leave for people. Commitment, steadfastness, and fidelity. Suffering for your felicity and changing your dreams to reality. That's what you need to leave for the generation after you. And that's what we need to leave to you, inshallah. Young people, please, this is very important. Search, dig, excavate, ex no, ex excavate, excavate and hunt. For what? Gold, silver, uranium? No. Search, dig, excavate and hunt. 
cover the countryside, the valleys, and the deserts. Whereas above the heights, the hills, the mountains, grow the cracks, the passages, and the tunnels. Navigate the semi-arid lands, sand dunes, and lowlands. Look inside spaces, dwellings, and halls. Land in the lake, lakes, swamps, and the depression. Swim the seas, the oceans, and the rivers. Enter farms, neighborhood, and storages. Right above difficulties, hardships, and conflicts. Walk in between vermin, snakes, and gerbils. Descend on the thorns, the rocks, and the marsh lands. To what? Not to find gold, silver, uranium, copper, zinc. No, to find those who are remaining from these or this generation. I put all these for you, but you have to go through it. Humanity's enemies are constantly being what? Ignoring them to deceive societies, neglecting them to spoil public opinion, sending them into exile to cut communication with them, but mouthing them to create alternative role models, criminalizing them to scare your communities, torturing them to change their faith, killing them to kill their ideology, stultifying your minds if you follow their footsteps, promoting the mob to let people turn their back to them, and describing them with backwardness, retrogression, and fundamentalism, radicalism, and confrontational attitude, having confrontational attitude, ignorance, and not keeping up with the times, having reverse thoughts, tangible janks, which is bad luck, and bogus opinion. That's what they describe them. Those, the humanity's enemies, the anti-civilization, anti-humanity, and anti-life. Please, review what you have been taught in school as called history. As called history. It's not the history of your grandparents, your societies or nations, your religion or your civilization. The civilization that dazzled other nations and civilizations. No, it is not and it was not. It was mere insignificant signs or indication written to promote the role models and the icons and the achievement, the achievement that did not benefit the societies, but benefited whom? But benefited on the contrary, their own followers, friends, and followers, friends. Please review what you have been taught in school and was called history. It's not the history of your parents, grandparents, your society or national or nations, your religion or your civilization that dazzled other nations and civilization. No, it was mere insignificant signs or indication written to promote their role models and icons and achievement that did not benefit their societies, but on the contrary, was benefiting their own followers, friends, and relatives. After what? After what they have done to them. Impoverishing Embo em the rich, weakening the strong, trans uh, tranching, tarnishing, tarnishing the pious, ridiculing, ridiculing the learned scholars, displacing the nobles, and obliterating the value of the greatest number of members of the country. After what? After impoverishing the rich, weakening the strong, tarnishing the pious, ridiculing the learned scholars, displacing the nobles, and obliterating the value of the greatest members of the country. Their promoted culture is not your culture as well. It's very strange culture. 
very strange to your values, manners, moralities, tradition, and habits. I don't attack any other culture. Could be suitable for other people. But what I'm asking you, if possible, to use what could suit you and don't use it all for you. Not every strange is corrupting, and not every corrupting is strange. Not what suits me can suit other societies, and not what suit other societies can suit my society. Does not apply the rule of one size fits all, but instead follow the golden rule of Imam Shafi'i. My opinion is right, but could be wrong, and my colleague's opinion is wrong, but could be right. Regarding religion, they made it, anyone can talk about religion. They made it like a domain and like space as one of the prominent scholars of the current era is saying. Anybody can talk about it. And you know who's talking about it today? The ignorant before the scholars, the fools before the juries, the abusers before the reformers, the liars before the honest, the unjust before the just. The, the humanizer before the God fearing, the dancer with the drummer, and the fallen whore without, pipe, without the pipe man. They are calling people to review the religion, reviewing Allah's words and revelation. You know who's Allah? Allah who created them, me and them, from dirty water, then made us a semen drop and put us in a safe place. They made us look like a leash. They made us like a chew, something you chew. And then from this chew, make the pairs, male and female. Then he breathed in us to give us life. And he give us this, then he'll give us life again. And they want to come and change his words. They want the creatures to hold the creator accountable to them or for them. They want the produce, the material produced like the pencil, the pen, to review the producer, the maker. They want the swan, the sound, to correct the sower the sun to clear the soul. They want the eating, 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 uh, to choice the eater. They want the fetus to choose his or her parents and sex. They want the tool or instrument to develop its making. This is what humanities, humanity and civilization enemies want for nations, societies, and individuals. Those miserable humanity's enemies want to change the creature's nature, the creature's nature, all the creature's natures, and blur the adorable beauty of the magnificent, magnificent creativity of Allah. They want to change the creature's nature and blur the adorable beauty of the magnificent creativity of Allah, who perfected the creation of everything and started the creation of me and you from clay, from dust and water. Many of those miserable ones were defied or idealized, become like God, behaving like God in every aspect of our social life, especially in the political and governing fields where they allowed creativity, innovation, invention, to happen without principles, without principles at all, and parameters and values. Such philosophical behavioral attitude of them made humanity to reach what it reached nowadays in our modern era, era of global enlightenment, Civilization and splendor and space mastery. I'll say this again. 
Many of those miserable ones were defied, claiming and behaving like God in every aspect of life, especially in the governing fields and political field. Where they allowed creativity, innovation, and the invention to happen without principles, parameters, and values. Such philosophical behavioral attitude of them, of them made humanity to reach what it reached in our current modern era, the era of global enlightenment, civilizational splendor, and the space mastery. My statement in blue, as you can read it now, no enlightenment or civilization or mastering without values, cultures, and religious principles. No enlightenment, enlightenment or civilization or mastering master without values, cultures, and religious principles. Please don't judge the remaining of this generation with what has been said written about them by whom? By those fools amongst the humanity's enemies. Please judge them from their writings and the impact of their actions and the achievement. Please be with them as you are always just and wise men and women. Why? Because this generation is the link between the generations lived in the shade of the great Islamic state that established Islamic world order. And what we see nowadays, and in particularly from young people who have no identity, unfortunately, no character or social culture that can let them to build societies or able to define and draw the future dimension of society and nation. Please be fair, look for them, connect with them, listen to them. Nothing is impossible, you will find them. It may become few, but nothing is possible. And if you decide to do that, let us work together and put our trust in Allah. In this last uh, nearly 50 minutes, I took you to a journey, discussed nine points about the culture and the atmosphere that we lived through over the last 60 or 70 years. And my appeal to you, please try to catch them, those people or this generation, before they leave and you'll be like orphans, unfortunately. Don't do that. Still some time to find some of those people in your countries. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.